Today on Celebrity Lemonade Stand, brought to you by Me and the Bees, boxer, author, and lifestyle expert, Layla Ali. She's undefeated in the ring and she comes from greatness. Now Layla has taken that winning spirit to build her own brand, Layla Ali Lifestyle, which features her balanced and nutritious spice blends. Who would you want to join you in the kitchen? Join me in the kitchen, yeah. Michelle Obama for sure. Yeah. It's a sister. She gonna throw down with me, the sister, yeah. yeah. Okay. See what Michelle's cooking up. It's not just my name on it. Right. I source where I get my spices. I source the, the custom containers. I source the team to create my labels. It was like my passion project that is still a passion project. Yeah. Join me as we peel back the layers into the rarely seen lives of our favorite celebrities. They'll take us on the journey from their first jobs to their latest money-making venture. Okay, so I'm excited to talk to you because you are a former pro athlete, boxer, the best there is, undefeated. Yeah. Hey, hey, you're also an author, a cook, you do it all, and now you have an amazing lifestyle brand. We're gonna get into all of that, but first, we wanna take it back a little bit to that very first job you had. What was it? The very first job that I had working mm -hmm. for someone else was at McDonald's. Ooh. Yes, I remember going to visit my father for a summer vacation, feeling like I wanted to start making some money because I wanted to be independent, and we went to the local McDonald's, um, and I got a job. Okay, yeah. so what were you doing? <laughs> you know, flipping burgers, you know, making fries, everything. So what do you think having that first job really taught you about life and some of the lessons maybe you're still using today in business or your personal life? I think it taught me independence, mm. uh, discipline, um, because, you know, you have to be at work on time. There's certain jobs that you have to do. You have to take orders. You have to work as a team. And it taught me that I was going to get paid, you know, for going to work and to be consistent. If I'm a trash man, I'm going to be the best trash, trash man. If I'm a pilot, I'm going to be the best pilot. If I'm a boxer, I'm going to be the best boxer. So really what that entails is learning what it takes to be the best, being consistent, and constantly, you know, do, willing to grow and check yourself, you know, so that you can get better at what you do. Well, speaking of boxing, what led you into the ring? Seeing women's boxing on television for the first time. Really? You know, a lot of people assume Muhammad Ali's daughter boxing. Mm -hmm. I was not an athlete growing up. Mm -hmm. Never wanted to box until I visually saw women boxing for the first time. I went to, to watch a Mike Tyson fight at a friend's house, and these women came in on the undercard, and I was amazed and surprised and couldn't believe I didn't know about it. And that's when I decided to get into it and start training. Did your dad give you any advice about the business behind boxing? My dad's advice was don't do it. <laughs> it's not for you. It's too hard. It's a man's sport. Uh -huh. And I was like, Daddy, I think I'm going to have to show you. But he um, did give me his blessings eventually, and he said I was wrong. You can do it. Women can fight, and, you know, I'm proud of you. So, yeah, it was, it was amazing. But I'm his baby girl. I'm the youngest mm -hmm. out of nine. You know, I think the main thing is just my father was super sensitive. People know he's kind. They know he's giving, but he would cry a lot. He was so sensitive to people's feelings. And to see such a strong man able to cry, you know, able to say sorry to me when he was wrong about telling me about my life path and what I couldn't do and admit when he was wrong, you know, it's just like it really gave me a balance and outlook on how a man can be and a man should be. That's awesome to be able to grow up with that type of influence now to pass those yeah. qualities down to your kids. But you're not only a mother, you're a businesswoman too. <laughs> I mean, from your days of McDonald's to then a pro <laughs> athlete to now a lifestyle brand. Talk to us about Leda Ali lifestyle and why you decided to go into that direction. So I've done so much, right? I have this really long resume and hosting television shows and doing all this. And when I retired from boxing, it took me some years to really figure out what could I be passionate about like I was with boxing. And in the background, I was always helping people reach their weight loss goals, writing meal plans, helping them with information about non-GMOs and organics, and just trying to help people be the best version of themselves. And I decided to start Lay Lolly Lifestyle and turn it into a business because I was like, man, this is what I would do for free. This is what I love to do. How can I help people on a larger scale? But do you think it was difficult transitioning from a boxer, from an athlete? someone who is always in the ring to now being taken seriously as a businesswoman? You know, I don't really worry about that because I was serious and I think that, you know, when you're putting in the time and you're really doing the work, you don't have time to worry about who's not going to take you seriously. Um, it took many, many years, put it like that. I mean, 
in terms of making sure strategically I was doing the right thing, I started hosting cooking shows, right? I went on Chopped yep. one a couple times. So people were like, oh, okay, I came out with my cookbook, Food for Life. And so I built it up. People don't, didn't know that I've been cooking since I was nine or 10 years old, right? So then I came out with Leila Ali Spice Blends, but I didn't just like, just slap it out there, right? But there's always gonna be those people who's like, wait a minute, she's a boxer, she has spices, mm -hmm. but the story's there, the foundation's there, the credibility is there. So I don't really worry about that. It's almost like you spent your whole life preparing for boxing and your whole life simultaneously pe preparing for a lifestyle brand. Somebody had to cook, and it's always <laughs> been me. My mom didn't cook when I was growing up. She, that was her thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I started at a very young age, but over the years I learned how to cook food that was good and good for you. Like for example, people say, what do you mean? Instead of using regular white bleached flour, I use cassava flour. Instead of using regular spices that have chemicals and fillers and refined white salt that's not good for you, and my spice blends, I use organic non-GMO spices and sea salt, you know, and then all of the flavors are there because I've actually myself, hands-on, created these recipes. So you're in there tasting everything that comes out. You're physically like in the kitchen, in the test kitchen, making sure everything I, is the way you I want. actually created these spices spices in my kitchen in terms of the recipes and then of course they're mass produced but they're recipes that I've been using for years and then I'm creating more as we go but I literally myself it's not just my name on it right I did that I sourced where I get my spices I sourced the, the custom containers I sourced the team to create my labels wow. it was like my passion project <laughs> that is still a passion project because yeah. it's not like the biggest part of the businesses that I have, but I'm so passionate about it because I literally created it from the bottom up. Okay, well, I want to taste some of this. We Let's have some it. fries. I'm going to have one of our stage producers yes, bring in some really... fries. I'm sorry, it's not as healthy that's as okay. some that's vegetables okay. or Look, something. Look, I Which bake one fries. Um, should I, put I think on you this? should do the soulful. Is it okay. open? Soulful seasoning. I don't think yep. it's... Okay, I'm going to open it. How much, am I allowed to put a lot on so it's, it's healthier? I just little, oh, I like the way it comes yes, out. Yes, 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 yes. So, okay, sprinkle that. So, right. the soulful seasoning salt is mm -hmm. extra special. So, most seasoning salts have like 95% salt. Mine has mm. about 73% salt, and the rest are organic herbs and spices. But so, it yeah, still well, tastes like I'm getting salt. No, I you're still, getting salt, yeah. absolutely. Mm. But you're also getting a whole lot of other flavors, what oh, I'm yeah. saying. Because so, I tasted these without it. And now I'm tasting it with it, oh, and it, it makes, definitely gives it a nice This is hands pick. down the best seasoning salt you're gonna get. Then you got Garlic Goddess, which okay. is salt-free. It's amazing, it's mm -hmm. delicious on everything. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Goat Seasoning Blend, which I dedicated to my father, the greatest Aww. of all time blend. I have six flavors. These three are some of my most popular blends that if I had to choose, mm -hmm. but they're all amazing, it's really hard. But what's- This is amazing, Yes, it's I balanced for you, so mm -hmm. a lot of people can't get their flavors right when they're cooking. So that's mm. the difference between my blends. If you just sprinkle them on, you don't need really a recipe. You got your vegetables or you have, you know, your pasta or mm -hmm. you have your meats or salad dressings, whatever okay. it is, you put it in there, it's gonna make it better. So I'm 100% uh, confident. So I need you to take these away before I eat them all. <laughs> wait, 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 I didn't get one, I didn't get one, wait. It's cheat day, it's cheat day. Oh, it's cheat day. Well, enjoy mm. that, enjoy that. Okay, we're gonna hand those off. You know, I gotta ask you, you know, as an undefeated athlete, 24-0, all right, 21 knockouts, get it right. That's right. It seems like you were always winning in the ring. Was there a time where you felt like you weren't winning in business or the things didn't oh, yeah. go your way? And Absolutely. what did you do? A lot of the time. Really? I mean, anyone will tell you this, anyone successful will tell you there's been a lot of failures along the way. There's been a, a, a door slammed in your face many times where people don't necessarily believe in your idea. I remember when I was pitching a cooking show, it was like, oh, we're not really into celebrity cooking shows right now. So there's this wave, right? And then mm -hmm. I'm like, what? And then like six months later, they're back into celebrity cooking shows, but I'm, I'm doing something else. But I didn't let that kill my dream. It was like, okay, their timing isn't right. And I just went on to something else. I think that my mindset is, is that when you expect that there's gonna be challenges, they're a little easier to handle. It's just a hurdle to get over. I mean, you're not gonna get faced with something you can't handle. So it's just really about putting your head together with others, a team of people around you that can help you and just c coming up with a solution. You know, but yeah, there's always gonna be challenges. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not. And as a business owner, what would you say is one thing that keeps you up at night? Oh my God, so many things. And we're about to play a game called Celeb Squeeze. So I have four celebs in my hand, and I'm gonna ask you rapid fire questions. You're gonna pick one of these celebrities and tell us why. All right, are you ready? Okay. Okay, so we have, of course, fictional boxer Rocky Balboa. Okay. We have Dwayne The Rock Johnson, actor and athlete. And we have Jessica Alba, entrepreneur and actress, and the first lady, Michelle Obama. All right. All right, so your first question is, da -da -da, drum roll, who would you want to be your spokesperson person for your brand? Michelle Obama. And that would be because she had a big initiative for, for people to get fit. Mm -hmm. she, um, she definitely um, will resonate with my core audience. And she, obviously she could speak, yeah. Okay. So she, she'd be the one, yep. Who would you like to defend your brand in the ring? The Rock. 
because uh, he is big and strong. He gonna knock everybody out like me, so I'll take the rock. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and who would you want to be your taste tester for the brand? Probably uh, Jessica Alba, because we have um, similar ideas when it comes to you know, clean products, because she has her honest product that she started, so she's all about non-GMO, organic, healthy products, so okay. she's going, yeah, she'd be my girl for that. Who would you want to join you in the kitchen? Join me in the kitchen? Yeah. Michelle Obama, for sure. Yeah. It's a sister. She gonna throw down <laughs> with me, the sister, yeah. yeah. Okay. See what Michelle's cooking up. Well, I'm well, sure she can't cook like me, though. Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> so, but I'm, well, her spi your spice is my helper. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, who would you not want to compete against in the kitchen? Oh, I would take them all. There's not one. <laughs> there, I'm not afraid in the kitchen just like I'm not in the ring, yeah. You know I competed on Chopped and I won a couple times, like champ, yes. okay? You, yeah, I'm not afraid, none of these. She's a champ, none of these. Out of the ring, ladies and gentlemen. This is Celebrity Lemonade Stand. A lot of times those lemonade stands are run by kids, so we want to give you an opportunity to get some questions from our kidpreneurs. Are you I ready? I love it, yes, I okay, love it. Okay, well the first question comes from 11-year-old Brady. Who do you think would win in a fight, you or Buzz Lightyear? Oh, Ooh. man, definitely Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> I would just go ahead and give it to him. Yep, Buzz. Buzz for the kids. Okay, Buzz for the kids. <laughs> and next question is from 12-year-old Landry. What advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, my younger self would definitely be take your time, don't try to grow up too fast, because at a certain point, you're going to have to pay all the bills, right? And, yeah, live, enjoy life, learn, enjoy your freedom. Yeah, I, I want to grow up too fast, so. All right, next up we have 13-year-old Taylor. What's the smartest investment you ever made? Smartest investment was investing in myself. Mm -hmm. So definitely you wanna take the time to get some knowledge, you know, learn how to get really good at something so that you always have that skill. So you've always been an entrepreneur. Oh yeah. Well, I appreciate <laughs> your honesty, transparency, Thank and you. for you coming on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs>